Hey guys and girls, back again. Mark Hummer here. Uh, this is like part two, really, of the previous video. We're going to be talking about some different stuff, but I'll also be touching and going back and forth from things we've discussed in the earlier video to sort of finish off some themes and ideas. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about tripods, light stands, and lots and lots of different accessories that I've found to make my life a lot easier, and I hope will also help you make your work a lot easier too. Now, no surprise, I like taking photos and I like doing video. And uh, anything that I can find to make that an easier and smoother process, well, that makes my life a joy. And uh, I'm going to share it with you if I found them to be beneficial. Now, we were talking earlier about my little system here where I had uh, the small rig plates and their Arco Swiss style mounts and then I've incorporated it here with a Manfrotto sliding plate. This is actually the one off my uh, Ronin S. So what this does goes on the Ronin S and now I can of course give that balancing system because it has that sliding rail but uh, still have that fixed point for quickly getting it on and off. So I got the benefits of both the uh, accessibility with the Arco Swiss quick and easy connection but I still got the sliding rail connected and that's like the best of both worlds. So I'd already mentioned that but what I was going to do is demonstrate it for you on an actual tripod. I was using my hand to illustrate it but let's actually work it on this tripod that I have here. So what I'm going to do is just mount it on here and this has the same situation this is exactly the same mounting arrangement where I have the um, Manfrotto sliding plate and I also have the Arco Swiss mount attached as well now the root was I was talking about I was talking about that sliding mount and how uh, beneficial it is to be able to balance you've got a big heavy lens like this on a on your ball head or your in this case it's a video head how do you go balance it because look what happens when I let go that's because it's hitting forward. If I only had the Arco Swiss plate on and I had no other means of balancing, uh, this would be a real nuisance for me when I'm trying to do video or photos and finding it moving on me all the time. So how can I uh, utilize this? Well, this is why I have the Manfrotto system because now what I can do by loosening this up, see how I can bring it forward and back, forward and back to balance. So if I bring this right way back now and I tighten it up, what happens now is when I let go, it sits still. Now remember before it was just dipping down? but I can quickly balance it. You could say, oh, you can lock it, you can tighten it up, yeah, but then you lose all the freeness of motion. And the whole point of a video head is freeness of motion and smoothness, fluidity of movement. So I've now got that fluidity of movement and perfect balance. Wherever I let it go, it's gonna pretty much stay there. Or I can make it stay there very easily. So I like this setup. You can have it any way you like, you can go further back, you can go further forward, you just move it where you need it, you know it's then safe and sturdy. So I just thought I'd run you through that, show you that I uh, am utilizing that, particularly with video, it's excellent. And But having a good tripod is very important. So we're talking about tripods and, uh, and light stands today a little bit as well. And in that context, this one here, I've, I've probably showed you several times before, I'm just trying to find where the name is on it. I don't know if I can get that up for you to read. But you can see here it's a Vanguard tripod. It's the Actus uh, 323AT. Now I really like this tripod. I think it's a ripper. It's nice and heavy. It weighs about, uh, I think it's four kilograms. Now most people when they get a tripod, the first thing they think is, oh, what's the lightest one I can get? Well, light's easy to carry. You're right there. But it's atrocious for actually using. When you've got something really weighty and sturdy as this one is, you get an excellent fluid motion without all the movement and vibration around. So if someone's bouncing on the floor and there's like a dance floor and it's a bit timbery and maybe flexing, this tripod's really going to absorb a lot of that because of the sheer weight and stability it has. The other advantage of this is it's very unlikely to get toppled over. And it can be utilized in many different ways. Now just the other day, I'll, I'll show you some uh, video and photos of a photo shoot I did. Uh, I did it with two uh, models and they were doing some cosplay. And the theme was for really uh, rocky environment. That was really where we were going with it. One was a, a Ray Skywalker from Star Wars, and she was sort of simulating the rough terrain she's worked on in the past in the movies. And then, of course, there was Phoebe with me, and she was doing a character from Skyrim. And both of those are sort of warrior female characters, and they wanted a rough terrain. And so what we did was we went out to this place called Slaughter Falls, which, unfortunate name, but it's a very nice place, and very rocky terrain, and we were able to get some great uh, photo there. So uh, what the, the situation was, though is because the terrain was so rough a traditional light stand like this would have been completely useless because when you put this out and excuse me I'm just going to try to extend that out you can see here that the legs are fixed 
So it can go very wide and be quite stable on a flat surface. So you're in a studio or in your home or in a park where it's just flat ground, this can be awesome to put some lights on. But uh, when you're talking about very bumpy ground, it's useless. Okay, so Mark Hummy here, I'm just illustrating. I'm with my good friend Phoebe. She's uh, modeling today for us, uh, doing a wonderful job. We just finished up the photo shoot, but I thought I would demonstrate for you the advantages of bringing a tripod on these uh, ruggy terrain rather than trying to use a light stand and to have all those uh, rocky things around us and boulders, you know, tipping over the lights and the wind and so on in case I get bumped. So I'm just gonna come in closer and I'll show you the value of the tripod and the terrain I'm using it on. Here's the light there as you can see it. Now I'll just come down again for you. Show you the ground and the tripod and the terrain we're dealing with. So that's the value of not having a light stand. Now it's not just the one I brought with me. I do have several. You can see here a backlit arrangement with a speed light. Again a tripod and a little weighted bag. Now I was using the rocks that were available at the time and that helped me with holding it down and keeping it steady. But you can see with these very, very lumpy conditions that if I was trying to use a light stand, I'd be in all manner of grief. And we'll just pan over to the last unit over here in the distance. And you'll see the other back light, which I'll just come in. And again, you see the terrain it's on. Very inconvenient. Had I not had a tripod in the correct unit. So when I say useless, it is completely useless because it'll just only sit satisfactory on a flat surface. You've got big boulders and bumpy grounds. You need to be able to adjust your legs so that you can have that sturdy straight and uh, without it toppling over and being safe. Now this is where of course something like a tripod is in a world of its own because you can adjust the legs. You can have some down low, some up high, and extend it in any way you like. And if the ground is bumpy, of course you can make that work for you. And that's what I did. So I've got three tripods I own. So I bought three with me and I was able to put all my lighting up on these tripods over this very bumpy, rough terrain and make everything safe and sturdy. So what did I do? Well, in order to make these work as light stands, all I did was I took off this uh, video head, which is just, you know, a few screws and it'll come off. And then I adapted it by having these items over the main screw there as a 3-8 screw in the center. Screw these in and I was able to attach my lights on this. So you can see it's got the traditional light stand uh, little arrangement. That just screws on and off, of course, as you can see here. This item here is actually from my Leaf Froto tripod, and it's an extension pole. So you can actually just, you can see here, it's got a little hole in the bottom there, 3 8 hole. It's got a 3 8 thread up top. This is quite interesting because it's actually a 3 8 and 1 quarter in 1. It's a spring-loaded arrangement, and you can have any sort of attachment that you like. It's quite universal. But what I did is, because I wanted to attach a, for a light stand, I put this on. So let me just get this on. Yeah, it just screws on. I have a little adapter mount there to get that on. There we go. Screwed it on. And what this does, this extends up, and you can just grip it like that, twist it like a tripod leg, and extend it. I screwed that on there, and I was able to put all my lights on that. Uh, for the other ones, for example, I made this, well, this is a jerry-rigged one from home. I do like tinkering around in my garage and making things if I can. I've recently bought three more of these extension poles that I can use on the tripods or couple up. Now, the advantage of these sort of arrangements is that not only can they be used on tripods to convert them into light stands, but you can actually couple them up because they have the same fitting either side. So the 3 8 goes into this 3 8 adapter, and then all of a sudden, what I've got now, I can have extra length so if i want this to go up really really high because the tripod could be limited in how high it goes up now with this i can have another meter higher if i want to and that can be really useful where's the extra height options uh valuable well when i was in that rocky terrain it wasn't always a situation of us being on the same plane i was often having to be low down in like a below the rock level and she was on a, a little precipice a little mound of rocks and so she was a good meter higher than I was so I had to really extend the light up very high to get it on the correct angle coming down onto her and so that meant I need I need to get about nine feet high so these extension poles can be really awesome then to get the extra height you need should you need to 
not always going to be in that situation but when you are it's nice to have a few of these accessories in your in your camera bag and look just have a look at this when you put that down that is really really tiny that goes in your camera bag and no problem at all and you can have that with you on the spot should you need that extra height so because i was down lower and i had to have the light up higher those extension poles are really cool. So I'm encouraging people to get things like that. As I say, this particular unit here that extends and screws on very conveniently, uh, this is from the Lafroto collection. It's a graphite composite thing, very, very lightweight on its own. It weighs next to nothing, but it's very sturdy. It's got a decent thickness to it and a good composite material, it's very strong. And uh, so I bought uh, three more of these. I have four in my collection now, and I can couple them up and have any length or quantity of tripods I want extended up with lights whenever I should need them. You don't always need them, but it's one of those things is when you've got them, you will use them. If you don't have them, well, you're not going to use them, are you? So uh, getting the job done properly, I think is very important. It's important to me anyway. I like to be sort of at least looking professional with the you know, uh, customers and clients that I have. So I want to project that I, I got a can-do arrangement, not a, oh, well, we have to compromise and do something else. I don't want to have to be in that position. So having accessories is terrific. Even just simply a variety of different size ball heads, for example, with you. So you've always got an attachment, and if you need to move something around and it's not quite the right angle, well, you know, you've got the chance that you can do that with the, the ball head. So that's really good. Uh, here I've got some uh, ball head. It's a Manfrotto ball head on a little steel plate. I have another little steel plate here and another little steel plate here. Now notice they've all got little light uh, stand mounts on them. Now what's the point of these things? Well, I'll just show you a little video and you'll see in my room. I use these all the time. I actually I made these up. What they are is simply just a steel plate with a bit of rubber on the bottom. And I've drilled a hole, drill a, say a 5.5 mil hole through the steel. And then using a tap tap and tap handle here now this is a quarter inch tap which is equivalent in metric uh, 6.2 mil and you just put it in the tap and you just tap the hole and you, then you've got a thread into it and you can easily attach pretty much anything now here i have a little mount but here it is directly mounted into this one so if i take this off here i'll just show it to you these are all homemade or not all of them are homemade i did buy one once and i bought it and i thought okay that was about 35 40 dollars and it's a great unit it works fine you know what i thought i could just build that myself with some scrap iron so uh, i had some scrap iron available and so i built these things up so this one here it's it's quite a larger one it's one of the larger ones that i have it's quite a heavy and robust plate but as you can see there you probably see the little hole in the center and it's just a simple drill hole uh, using my tap and handle the tap a thread in it and then i can of course now put these little um light uh, mounts and just screw them in because they're quarter inch as that hole is and if I choose to put a ball head in there now, well, I can, and that's very convenient. So I can attach something to that. Now, what would I attach to this plate, and what use is it? I'll give you a little example here. There we go. So I just spin this around. Excuse me, I'm just straightening it up for you. So it looks a little bit more graphical. And uh, here you go. So what we've got here is a dual light setup. So this is two 672 Amarins uh, LED light panels. They uh, usually have the batteries in them. And when they're all together, it's a little bit weighty. But it's a great light source and very versatile. So what I'll do is I'll put it on this plate. And I can put it on any bench top or chair or anywhere I like. And it's just so versatile to move around without having to have a tripod or a light stand with you. If you're doing it inside, for example, it's really convenient. And a lot of my videos are done inside, at least they are if I'm doing this sort of a thing. So uh, I found that uh, very useful, and that's just sort of like one application that you can utilize that for. You can have a ball head on it, as I have there, but you don't have to just have a ball head, as I'll illustrate to you now. You can also use it for uh, light extension poles. Now, this is an extension pole and the uh, bracket of course to support it and uh, maneuver it and uh, these are great units like I really like these things I think they're very very uh, useful and versatile what I'm going to do now is I'll just maneuver it in such a way that I can illustrate it on my bench so if I open this up a little bit I should be able to mount this on here we go see that worked perfect there we go and you just mount it to your little plate and there we go and now I've got a, a light stand uh, extension pole I can use that for whether it be for a speed light or continuous LED lighting, whatever I want to put on the end of that, I can, I can use it as a microphone boom, 
So whatever I want to use this for, I can. And uh, you know, you need some counterbalancing sometimes. If you want to counterbalance it, you can simply use something like a little sack and a steel weight. Clip it on the back here. I can just lift that up and show you. And there, that can give you some counterbalancing if it's extended fully out and the item at the end is quite heavy. But uh, if you do what I do here, the ones I have up on the wall here to support my LED lights, they're all bolted to those cabinets. So they're not just sitting up there, you know, rickety and about to fall over any minute. These holes that I have in this unit, you can probably see them here when I lift it up. You can see I've got the four holes. They're bolt mounting holes. So I can now bolt this to the cabinet and that enables me to make sure it's completely secure and fastened down really, really tight. Excuse me, I just put that down because I don't want that falling over. Yeah, so uh, being able to mount that uh, sort of to a cabinet or something, if that's a permanent fixture that you want, these are awesome. Bit of scrap steel, a few holes, a tap, cost you very very little I mean obviously you, know, you might have to buy the the tap and the handle but of course that's there forever now and that's a quarter inch it's universal for everything camera so that's great if you're into the photography and you want to make all sorts of devices definitely buy the little tap and handle some steel plates and you can make yourself great little tabletop mounts for any accessories that you may need here I've uh, got another illustration of one now. This is a little light. Now this is only for illustration purposes. I'm using this particular light and if I turn it on you can see it functions and it just gives you the ability now that I could put this light on somewhere and uh, have it in any angle I want. It has the ability to adjust so you, know, you can have it up and down. Obviously I can spin it around any direction I want and of course that's not as strong as the light goes. Uh, the light goes really, 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 really powerful. If I turn it all the way up, we're up to about 75, goes to 100%. And now that's actually not too bad, that. For a little light that it is, and it's only a small one, it's not a, not a big light, but it actually projects quite a decent amount of light for a little unit. So I find that very good. It'd be great for your little vlogs and so on, something like that. But notice here, but having it on that little frame, and this is again a jerry rig frame. I've just found a bit of old steel from like a wreckers. Uh, or a steel works and I've just drilled that and tapped that hole and now that could be a lighting source for me if I was doing a vlog and how convenient is that it's not any taking up any floor space and it hardly even takes up any table space so that could be really cool you could use that also as a microphone stand I'm sure as you can see right now that's exactly what I've done here on this unit here that I'm using for the microphone base and for my uh, phone so I can get composition uh, it's just a steel plate with a couple of holes in it and then I can mount ball heads or light stands or whatever I need and it's really good and it doesn't move around. The steel of course is heavy and so it's really versatile and strong and stable and they're a great little tool, just an accessory to have around the house. Very very useful and convenient. So I wanted to show you through those, try and uh, be creative. If you can make something yourself, why not make it rather than buy it? You know, that's got to be a good idea, isn't it? It's also fun. I actually enjoy tinkering around the garage. So even if I, even if it, look, theoretically if it cost me uh, $30 to make it and I could have bought one for $30 I'd still rather make it just because it's fun and interesting to do so and I get the satisfaction out of it that way and once I built one I know how to do it and then I can build uh, 10 of them if I wish to so uh, what have I gone through I've gone through everything I think I need to talk to you about today yeah I'm pretty happy with how we're going with that so uh, if I can uh, just uh, pause a minute and just say thank you very much everyone for your patience with me I'm going to continue making as many videos as I can and just as I've mentioned with the camera and the mounts and so on if you've got any advice for me or something you want to talk to me about please feel free to communicate with me I'm here just to chat and talk you can leave a message down below in the comments section my email is a link to this account so you can give me an email if you want to and we can converse privately if you wish but to never be shy to ask me about something that I may have tried and you might find useful if you want more information I'm readily available to talk anytime so thank you once again have a good day